Hey, my name is Joe Gilder from Personas, and today I want to show you how to set up your first song in Studio One. If you're like me, when you get into stuff, you really get into it, and recording music is amazing. It is a wonderful hobby to get into, but it can feel a little overwhelming, especially if you're starting out. With Studio One version six, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for you to open the software and start recording as soon as possible. Here's how that works. On the start page, click on the new button here. You'll see a bunch of templates, what we're calling smart templates, to help you get started. So pick what you want to do. I'm going to say we're going to record. And now I've got a couple of options up here. Do I want to record a single track, a guitar and a vocal, or a full band? Let's just go with a single track. Let's keep it nice and simple. And we'll call this song Sweetwater. Clever name. So here's what's great about this. It sets up the session for you with all the settings that you'll need. First thing I'm going to do is name the track. We're just going to call this guitar vocal. So what I'm going to do is just record myself singing and playing into a single microphone. A lot of folks want to get really fancy with it. Let's set up multiple microphones. Let's record to multiple channels. That's all wonderful. You can do all that. Absolutely. Just another day. For the first thing you record, you'll learn the most and get the most out of it if it's just you and an instrument. So if you play guitar, you have a single microphone, position it somewhere, I'd say about right here, where it's angled down towards your chest. So it's gonna pick up your voice nicely and also pick up the guitar and find a good happy medium in between. You'd be surprised how good a recording can sound with a single microphone on a musician playing an instrument. So don't discount that and it's a great way to learn the software while you're doing it. The first thing we need to do is record enable the track, hitting this button right here. Or fun fact, you can press R on your keyboard to do that. That doesn't start the recording, it just tells Studio One that this is the track where I want to record some audio. Now you'll notice as soon as I did that, we see this little meter jumping here and it's also jumping down here. That means we have things set up. There's input coming in from my microphone into Studio One. If you don't see any signal here, then chances are you need to change your input. That's what this little drop down menu is. So for example, I'm using a Revelator interface. It has two microphone inputs. If we set it to input two, we don't see any signal. But if we set it to input one, we can now see microphone signal. Now that we have signal, we need to set the level. Setting levels is a subject of debate amongst audio engineers. Some people like to set it as loud as possible because they think it sounds better. And then some people like myself just don't care. I think you should just set it to a level that is loud enough without getting anywhere close to clipping. So clipping is when this little green light goes all the way up to the top and it literally is too much for the circuitry on the box to handle and it causes a nasty clipping sound. We don't want that. And what happens is you set levels and you start to sing or start to play and what happens? Invariably, you're gonna sing and play louder than you did when you were checking the microphone. Live sound engineers know this, studio engineers know this. So in order to accommodate for that, we're gonna set it to a nice conservative level. Now, if we zoom in on this meter here, you can see there's negative numbers. So it starts at zero at the top. That's where clipping happens. We want it to be maybe down around negative 12, negative 14. Even down as far as negative 24 is great. We just wanna have a decent level, maybe halfway up the meter, but not really, really, really close to clipping because that's a game you don't wanna play because you always lose. Next, we're gonna do the scariest thing. We're gonna hit record. Down here on the bottom, you'll see a circle. That is our record button. We hit that and Studio One starts recording. Now, what I recommend here is just play a little bit of the song. Play like the chorus and then stop and go back and listen to what you just recorded. The way we listen is just by pressing spacebar. That starts the playback over. If you like the way it sounds, super, let's record. If it sounds weird, I'm gonna tell you a secret that professional recording engineers know. If it doesn't sound good when you record it, just record it again. Move the microphone in a little bit different position and try again. It's, it's not rocket science and there's no shame in the fact that it doesn't sound good the first place you put the microphone. So if the guitar is too loud, maybe move the microphone closer to your voice or angle it up towards your voice away from the guitar and then repeat this process again. Just hit record. You can record right over what you just recorded. Sing the chorus again, press spacebar to stop and hit spacebar to play and just keep doing this process of listening back, making an adjustment, listening back until it sounds pretty good. But you can learn a lot by, oh, if I just move this microphone two inches this way, it completely changes the way the recording sounds. 
that's really good information to know. And it's a good habit to get into now while you're starting out. Because once you start adding more microphones, it gets a lot more complicated and a lot more fun. But you have to always remember, it could be just as simple as moving the microphone to make the recording sound better. As you can imagine, we've only scratched the surface of what you're able to do inside of Studio One. If you have more questions or if you want to get into your first recording rig, call your Sweetwater sales engineer or head over to Sweetwater.com. <laughs>